Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde. I am here today to give you very good news that we have a special guest, Joelle Borum. Larry Borum's mother is coming onto our show to discuss what it's like to be an NFL mom, her favorite memories of Larry, a little bit about her and Larry and how excited she is for the Chicago Bears 2022-2023 NFL season. You don't want to miss how pumped up she is. She is instantly a fan favorite just because of, uh, at least she's my favorite now because of how well this interview went. But make sure that you stay tuned to the end. Make sure that you follow her on Twitter. Her link is in the description to go follow her. Make sure that you go and do that. But before we begin, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, BetStamp. BetStamp is a mobile and web-based platform in the sports betting space. Built for people looking to take sports betting seriously. BetStamp solves the problems serious sports bettors face on a daily basis by providing them information and tools they need to succeed such as tracking their record, seeing the best odds across sportsbook within their state or region, and interacting with other top bettors to see how they make their moves. Download today on the Google or App Store or use your own web browser. Use referral code JSHI, that's J-A-Y-C-H-I, to get in on the action when you sign up. And make sure to follow me, Chicago Nick. Make sure that you go follow me, Chicago Nick, and use code J-A-Y-C-H-I, that's J-Shy, at betstamp.com or on the mobile app. Connect your favorite sport book or your local sport book and make sure that you start using Betstamp today to get the best odds for your favorite teams. With that, here's the interview with Joel Borum. Hello, everyone. I'll go back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody, and as said before, we have a very special guest joining us today, Joelle Borum, mom of Larry Borum, Chicago Bears offensive tackle, fifth round pick from 2021, second year Chicago Bear. We are super excited to have her, and we've and she is probably the funniest and nicest lady I have ever met <laughs> from the Chicago Bears family so far. So, uh, Mama Borum, welcome to the show. What up, though? What up, though? <laughs> That's I a love Detroit it. Thing. <laughs> so I, so just so some fans know is Larry, are you guys from Detroit? Are you from the Michigan area? Yes, we are. Oh man. So you grew up with the NFC North, uh, as Larry grew up. Um, uh, most definitely. We're actually right on the other side of eight mile. Oh, right down, wow. right down from where Eminem grew up. <laughs> oh man. So are you saying that Larry's pregame playlist is strictly slim shady? Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. And so just kind of to ask that question out of the gate, um, I know we kind of had a couple things that we talked about beforehand, but growing up with the NFC North, you know, seeing the Bears over the years, especially, you know, the 2006 Super Bowl team, 2010, 2018, uh, 2018 before Larry came to the Bears. How familiar were you guys with Chicago before Larry got drafted to uh, Chicago? I'll be honest, um, not I was familiar with the city. My sister lived there for years. So I took many a trips to Chicago, love the city, love the atmosphere. Um, waterfront is great. I wasn't really into football. My son played basketball and I was okay. a basketball mom. So football was not on my radar until he went to high school. <laughs> Oh man. So that, so Larry's one of those stories where it started, uh, you know, freshman year of high school, and then he just was a natural born football player. He, you know what, we were looking for a school for Larry to go to. I wanted to get him out of the public school setting and we went to parochial school. And when he walked through the door, the eyes rolled, everybody wanted Larry. So they made it, um, very comfortable for him and yes they introduced him to football well that's see see like that's such a like that's a story that people don't know about from like some players people are like oh he played at mizzou and then he went to the nfl like i had no idea larry had gotten involved that late in football i played in elementary school until high school so larry just you know took took the route and look where he's at now. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, he actually played basketball and football up until his junior year in high school where he had to make a decision and he felt like it was his easiest route to get to college was going to be on a football scholarship. Did, was he recruited at all as a basketball player or was it strictly football? It was strictly football, but I'll tell you what, some of my best memories are on that basketball court. My son was a natural and he still loves to hoop. And at 320, he can still dunk. He can do a 360 on you for real. Larry has the softest hands. He, he was the best basketball player. The problem was he had plantar fasciitis 
and his feet weren't having it. Oh no. I mean, that's impressive. I mean, that's like Shaquille O'Neal coming down the lane. Yes. And Duncan. <laughs> he was, um, so he went to brother rice and we actually came to Chicago and brother rice from Detroit played against brother rice, Chicago. Oh, wow. And yeah. And in parochial school here, he was the biggest thing. The biggest, no, there was nobody in, in high school at the time in parochial school that was bigger than Larry. <laughs> well, I mean, Hey, I, he, he definitely has the size now to do both sports. I will say that. And the Bulls could definitely use another big man. I don't know if he's <laughs> trying to be the next Bo Jackson, be a two-sport athlete. But, hey, uh, we've had Stacey King on before, and I'm sure Stacey could, is going to watch this and be like, oh, man, we, another guy? Let's bring him into Chicago. <laughs> bring him in. Give him a tryout. <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we like to hear. So, you know, starting, you kind of made a comment earlier in regards to, you know, some people don't know what it's like to be, you know, a pro athlete mom. And you said some of your favorite memories were him on the basketball court. Uh, can you give, you know, your favorite memory of him, like until this point, it could have been training camp this year, but just overall, what is your favorite football memory of Larry so far throughout his career? Okay. I, I have three and it's when he had to go up against Aaron Donald, when he had okay. to go up against TJ Watt and Nick Bosa. And it's only because those names are so huge. And those guys have solidified their place in the league. And here my son is, a fifth-round rookie. You know, they always have to throw that in. And he's out there holding his own. I don't care what anybody says about a chip block here and a chip block there. Everybody gets a chip block. Don't put it on my son like he got a little help. He was supposed to get help. What are you going to do? But he held his own. And I those got, were my best agree. moments. Oh my gosh. So going back, you said the, uh, the TJ Watt comment. So I remember Monday night for, or it was Sunday night football against the Steelers this past season, Larry being a rookie. And I remember he held his own in the announcers. We even like Larry Borum, you know, rookie from Mizzou is holding his own against one of the best, the arguably the best pass rusher last year. <laughs> and, and Aaron Donald, he held his own against too. So, you know, saying those feelings, you know, when you hear your son's name announced in that category, holding some of the league's best, how does, how does that make you feel as a, just a mother, as a human, and as a football mom? Overjoyed. Um, it's still surreal. I, I watch it and say, oh my gosh, holy shit, Larry's on TV. Like, my son is wearing an NFL jersey. It is still so surreal for me because we were held back every step of the way. We were told time and time again what he couldn't do. And I always told my son, you show him what you can do. Oh, That's man. it. We don't oh, care man. what they say. You, you prove them wrong. And, and we take that with a, with a grain of salt and we put that chip on our shoulder and we wear it proudly because we really did fight every step of the way. I, you know, I, you know, you told me some of the stories ahead of time, you know, uh, about Larry and, uh, you know, growing up. And we talked a little bit about just players as a whole, what some people don't know about them and their background, because, and I've admitted this to you. I admit it myself. Bears fans are super hard on players, even after one bad play. I mean, Larry could, could give up one sack the entire game against a guy like Aaron Donald, but that's the, that's all bears fans. Remember, they don't remember that he <laughs> held like held him from, you know, getting to Justin Fields the rest of the game. So just like, as a, like a mother, like just, how, what do people need to know before we kind of get into Larry's bears career? What do people need to know about these players? And just from like a family standpoint, from a mother's standpoint, uh, overall parenting standpoint about how like players feel after this kind of, you know, situation and kind of how their background builds them to be a stronger person in the NFL to take that criticism. Absolutely. Um, most of the, the young men get very good sound advice to stay off social media. Um, I don't know how many listen, but it's very, very rough out there. And the fans need to understand that these are young, impressionable men that are giving their life, their body, the, everything to this league so that these fans can have something to root for, to hope for, to bet on, and to enjoy. Give them a little bit of a break, you know. Some of the rumors are just outrageous that go around. 
don't buy into all the nonsense, you know, use your common sense if you have any and, and just be a little bit nicer human beings all the way around. And I think ah. it'll go a long way. I think so too. I mean, Larry, I know Larry's pretty humble on social media. You know, I, I was introduced to you from Twitter. That's how kind of you and I started interacting. And, you know, I've known about Larry since I did my draft analysis of him last year when he was first drafted by the Chicago bears. And he does have a, I mean, he's such a humble human being, especially being in the position that he's in, you know, going, you know, drafted by one front office, coming to a whole new front office and holding his own. I mean, the, like a lot of new front offices come in and clean house and Larry being so young and, you know, that could be very scary for a player like him who is still working, which he clearly did a very good job proving himself, kind of saying the guys that he went up against and held his own, but that could be a very nerve wracking situation. So, you know, kind of talk, getting into Larry's career so far, you know, being his mom and everything, what was it like to hear the situation where Ryan Poles and Matt Eberfus came in? And that feeling of, was there fear? Was there happiness? And just, if you can hit on a little bit for the fans, so they understand from a player and family standpoint. Well, it was funny because I had a talk with his agent um, before they, um, all of this happened. And before we knew that they were, we knew Nagy was gone. We didn't know um, exactly, but we pretty much knew they were gonna clean house. And his agent was like, we're gonna we're gonna ride it out. We're gonna see what happens. Lo and behold, here comes polls. Here comes flus. They have the same agency that my son has, and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is a good thing. This is a business. So they have the same agency. They're under the same agent. It means nothing. We were lucky that Larry's been through this before. This is nothing new to him, and he knew what to do. You put your head down. You go in. You grind and you show you have to show and prove with a new coaching staff they don't care what you did last year it, that's just the truth they really don't care what they care is what you do this year and are you going to buy in are you going to buy into what they want this team to be and I'll tell you I really like this coaching staff I really like the line coach I really like that they brought the best out of Larry because I'm seeing another side of him. He's more aggressive now. He's he's definitely standing up for Justin. You know, the whole line, the whole mentality of that line is just something different. And I'm really excited about it. But Larry knew what to do. He's been through this before. So it was not his first go around and he did everything right. And that's what matters. Wow. I mean, that's just like hearing that from, you know, not, not an analyst, not a podcast, not anything, hearing it from someone, obviously you're as close as it gets to Larry and knowing what's going on with that. I know you guys have a very strong communication. That's just something different that I, me as a fan, don't, you don't think about that out of the gate. I'm sure growing up, Larry didn't think about that kind of situation as well out of the gate. And it's good that you know, everything happens for a reason, all those other situations he's been through. And it's good to hear that, you know, you're, you as his mom are supporting the coaching staff as well, because you've been as close as it gets to seeing all the situations he's been in. So that's very, that's very exciting to hear. And, you know, speaking of exciting and speaking of that, you know, kind of going into the beginning of Larry's time with the Chicago bears, you know, drafted last year in 2021, I'm sure you guys were smiles for miles. And he was too this, when he got that phone call from, you know, Ryan Pace in the front office, what was, what was the reaction? What, where were you guys? And what was the first thing you guys did after Larry got drafted? All right. So we, we kept it very small, you know, COVID, my mother's very ill. So it was, it was just us in the house. It was me, Larry, his sister, his girlfriend and her mother. And, um, you could hear us probably throughout the whole neighborhood. Um, for any other moms out there, I blew it for my son. I got the call first from his agent as he was getting the call and I wasn't paying attention and I blew it. I, I'm like the bears, you're going to the it's Chicago, you're going to the bears. I totally blew it. <laughs> I'm as a mom, I, I swear, I blew it. I, I couldn't hold it. And it, it was the funny, I just, 
I blew the whole moment, but nobody cared because everything happened so quickly. He got the call the same time my call was coming in. It's going on TV and we're just, everybody erupted and we're just screaming and crying. And he just grabbed me and he just held me and I'm crying. And I'm like, you're, you're staying close to home, Larry. You're staying close to home. And it meant so much because for four years, I had that long travel to Missouri and I went often. I was there almost every week in Missouri. Wow. So it was to know that he was going to be so close to home just felt so right to me. Wow. That, I mean, you, you see, you see, um, you know, reactions from players and you, they got their whole family behind them and, and everything. And it was such a strange time during COVID, especially for some of these players. Uh, they didn't get the same exact experience as they would have if it, you know, was, you know, normal. And that's so great to hear. And I can't believe, so you got the call first before Larry got the call. <laughs> Don't tell anybody it works that way. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it works that way. It depends. All I, right. have brother, I have a super, super good relationship with his agent. That's like, I told him, you take Larry, you got me too. You got the whole family and we're ride or die and you're stuck with me. So Man, I Oh man. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. So, I'm sure. So I know that you said you guys are outside of Detroit. I'm sure when some people started finding out he was in the NFC North, they're like, yay. And then they found out he went to Chicago. They're like, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I walk around in bear stuff, bears hats, bears jacket. And everybody's like, Ugh, you like the bears. And I'm like, my son is a bear and ev oh, everything changes. Then they're like, are you from here? I'm like yeah we're from here and you know so everybody's opinion changes once if you say look my son's a bear yes i proudly will wear the bears i don't care where i am ah uh, well we love to hear that i mean as bears nation is everywhere i mean you see us all the i mean even when they're playing in detroit it feels like sometimes there's more bears fans than lions fans especially over the last couple of years unfortunately for the lions yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> just had to throw that little jab in there uh, but, you know, another question for you is, you know, you kind of talked about that distance and Larry being close to home. Uh, when, when Larry left for rookie minicamp last year, you know, how often did you stay in touch with him? Did you come to Chicago with him? Uh, you know, kind of what was that scenario like? Um, it was really good. Um, me and Larry, we text every day. And as a mom, I had to learn when he went away to college. We can talk every day, but for moms out there, the best thing I can tell you is keep it to a minute. If you can't say what you need to say in a minute, don't make that phone call. Kids are busy. They're doing a lot. So me and Larry, we text every day and we had short conversations every day just to see where he was at mentally and how things were going along. So we, we did keep in touch every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I'm not mad about that. I talk to my mom every day too. And she's, you know, it's always good to get mom, especially mama bears perspective. I know that you're mama bear on Twitter. So it's just, I, I totally understand. And it's great to hear that you have that relationship with him. And I'm sure when you guys, what was your reaction also? Because, you know, yesterday was the 53 man cut for the Chicago bears. Larry had, had a pretty good foot in the door being a player last year, being a starter last year you know, during, but his rookie season, anything's up in the air. Kind of what was that anxiety like building up that day? And when you guys finally found out that Larry had made the 53 man roster? Um, you know what? I tried to stay off social media um, pretty much. till the end of the day, I, you know, we had a good feeling going in, but you know what? You can never be complacent in this industry. Anything can happen. So it was a good feeling. It's a sigh of relief. It's almost like draft day all over again. Oh man. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure there was a big, Ooh, after yes. <laughs> oh, Woosa. I like that. I like that. I learned, I learned Woosa from bad boys too. I don't know if you ever saw that movie, yes. <laughs> but Woosa. So when you said that, I was like, yep, that's exactly what I'm talking about. A little Woosa in there. Um, you know, kind of going off of, you know, being, we kind of talked about you being a mom, Larry's, you know, experience, you know, kind of going through all that kind of want to ask you just, you know, two final questions. So the first one is what is something that you want Chicago bears fans to know about, 
you know, being Larry's mom, but also just like what, what you love being as a Chicago bears fan, like what, what it's like seeing the interaction, just, just your experience overall with the bears fan base. Um, the bears fans, the culture, it's amazing. And I want to thank all each and every one of you bear fans for accepting me and taking me on and supporting us as a family and as a whole. Um, they're amazing. Just got to make sure that you put it out there on the field. Cause if you don't, they let you know, and they don't let you forget it. So oh. that's, you know, so, <laughs> you know, we just, we like to, to really, I really like to interact with the fans. I, I really do. And they're so good and they're so humble and they're so real. And I want them to know that we're real people too. You know, and in, in my house, we preach positivity and production. You keep a positive attitude and you produce. And that's all that matters. And that's what people are going to remember you by in this world, you know? Absolutely. I love that. I, I, you know what? I think you need to be the Bears motivational speaker. I like, uh, you know, every Mother's Day, you come into Hallis Hall and you talk to everybody about that because, you know, you make me want to run through a brick wall right now and I don't play in the NFL. So <laughs> I sit behind the mic. <laughs> well, listen, put it out there. If they invite me in, I'm coming. <laughs> All right, Bears, you heard it there first. I mean, I, I would, I think that that's something that could definitely happen. They've had some great speakers coming in. So if you, if you go on there, do you have to give me a little shout out? How about that? Oh, definitely. All of right. Course. We just made a deal. We just made a deal. You guys saw that. And, you know, Mama Borm, I want to ask you one final question. I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your day to come on today and especially talk to the fans, but you know, Come, everything that's happened this offseason, the players that they've brought in, you know, I've spoken with Justin Jones. I've talked to a couple of former Bears players on the podcast so far. What do you believe is going to happen? What, how do you feel about this season? Is this feeling different than last year? Do you feel more confident? Uh, you know, what can you say to give Bears fans a little bit of uh, from a mother's to son perspective? How do you feel about the Bears this upcoming season? This is a whole new team and they better be ready because we're coming. And it may not be this year, but that Super Bowl ring is going to be ours. We're going to get a ring. And uh. this coaching staff is going to get us there. I love their energy and they run hard. All the practices are hard. These are They're making these players earn it and, and really work for it. So we're coming. We're coming for that Super Bowl. You heard it here first. The Super Bowl's coming through Chicago. That's a, that's a that's a threat to the NFC and the NFC North, especially. I know I know that you definitely you know you took on being a you know a Bears mom because I've seen what I see how you feel about the Green Bay Packers. I see how you feel about the Minnesota Vikings. I know Detroit. You know you got a little soft spot. You know that's home, but I love. I'm super excited. I I. I think you just punched your ticket to speaking to the Chicago Bears, Mama Boy. <laughs> well, look, all they have to do is invite me in. I'm here. All they got to do is invite me. I'm coming. Absolutely. And thank you again for accepting this invite to come on to Just Another Year Chicago. It's been great talking to you. Oh, well, I, you thank know, you for having me. Absolutely. I know that we're going to chat after we're done recording here, which I'm super excited about, but wanted to thank you again. And for all the fans out there, make sure that you go into the description. You'll see mama Borum's Twitter. Make sure that you give her a follow. Yes, she's, great. Follow me. she's great at responding to everybody. She's great at interacting. She's obviously taking on being a diehard bears fan very well. So mama bear, thank you again. Thank you. You guys have a great day. Thank you very much again for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody. Make sure that you subscribe to stay tuned for all updates, and we'll see you guys next time.